allowing you to take responsibility for, for ourselves as yes. a student was fascinating. Just that concept alone, that we can take responsibility for ourselves. We are responsible for our attendance and what we get out of school because of what we put into school. That's how my mother raised all of us and then going to the school. It's just like, you know, well, that was the other thing is I never had that. And then having that, that's what gives me hope. I mean, that's what keeps me going. I mean, I never had direct parenting. So it's like all my parenting skills and everything come from Maslow, come from my foster mother. That's where I... Sometimes people get, oh, there goes the Maslow top room, you know, and they're only going Maslow. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's relaxing. It's, you know, I actually, it's, it's hard, though, you know, dealing, having my daughter in the school district, having a mother like me. Because <laughs> she's constantly being sent home saying she doesn't know when to stop talking, she doesn't, you know. And, and my attitude is like, you know, maybe she doesn't know when to stop talking. You know, it has its good points and its bad points to have to live in the society, you know, the way it is, knowing what we know. It's, really good. it's a, it really is a clash of cultures, mm -hmm. too, yeah. of, of realities. But it's almost trusting life. You have to let go, just trust, mm -hmm. trust yourself, trust life. That's the that's, but that's, that's what scared a lot of people about Maslow too, though, is because you know they're so used to this this structured system. Right. To them, right. ours looked like it had no structure to it, and right. it had a hell of a lot of structure to it. I mean, there was a lot of concepts in that in that school that people just couldn't relate to because they saw it as too abstract, and it really wasn't. See, people judged abstract. before they had a chance to go inside and see what was actually going on. People would judge and label. Well, that's well, what why was on would you like that to go to school? I mean, that was the thing is, what, what are they doing right. there? Yeah, right, 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 there was suspicion, you know, yeah. why do you want to go to school? So why are you getting up so why are you going to school? <laughs> I can remember we had a really huge snowstorm uh, in February where we were supposed to get a week off for winter recess, but we wound up having two weeks off because we had a week off from all that snow and the winter recess. And during that, those two weeks, I remember coming into Maslow to take some kind of a test that Vita had to come and open the school for us, and it had something to do with the... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. We had to come in and do that test, and, and I did. I mean, I wanted to do it. I don't remember. I don't remember. It was a college. That was a project credit. advanced. College, college credit. credit. Right. It's like, it's psychology or English? Psychology. Psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember doing that. You know, I mean, that was incredible. I mean, the regular school, I, I wanted to go to school just to meet my friends and go and hang out, but Maz, I wanted to go and be within the corridors and be in the classrooms and, you know, experiencing whatever it was. This, this fascination of getting to know ourselves and people. I think education is to free people, and I think that our educational system isn't freeing anybody. It's, it's, right. it's to put you into a system and force you to stay within a system that doesn't allow you to be yourself, doesn't allow you to be free. You know, learn how to be independent, learn how to cook for yourself, learn how to think for yourself. Uh, There's no empowerment at all. It's all taken away. It's all control. You know? But you know what? I, I was in the system. I mean, I, yeah. I taught. I taught. I taught for 10 years. I know, you know, there's certain expectations of you as a teacher put on by society, put on by the by parents, put on by the faculty, that, you know, you have to teach these children reading, writing, and arithmetic. Because it, I, I used to, when I first started, I was very Maslow-oriented. I didn't do things traditionally. I did, thing, I did a lot of things through movement. I did a lot of things through, through self-expression. And I got shot down. I, and by the time I had done my tenure in the district, I was like dittoed and I didn't care and I just, yeah. I hated working because I hated what I had to do because I had people complaining. What is she doing? My kid isn't coming home with any papers, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you have to perform and you have to, you have to answer to people and you can't, you know, it would be nice if, if things were like they were at Maslow, but it, so it's what just, happened with that now? Where are you now with that whole process? Well, right now I am so burnt out on teaching. Right. I just, I shudder to think that I, I have to go, I have to do three months to get my retirement. I'm three months short of, of getting my retirement. Vested. By being, being vested. Mm -hmm. So somewhere along the line I have to do three months more in education, it doesn't have to be Brentwood, just in, in education, New York State education system. Mm -hmm. And I like, I figured it out, 
that I have 20, you have to do 20 days within seven years to um, keep your status in retirement. So I figure that I have 21 years to get those three months because I don't want to do more than 20 years in seven, so 20 days try to, in seven so you, years. So you're saying that rather than try to bring a change into the system, that like the system's not going to change, screw it, you don't it's really not, care to challenge it, no. and yeah. that's it. I'm, you, You've had your experience I've been with it. so, I've been spit on, <laughs> you know, was I've had bad experience. Was there any part of the faculty at all that was like with you? Yeah, yeah. 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 Colleagues, and you, you do do, you know, you have some things, but you, I, I was a special ed teacher, so you're working with challenged children, and uh, it's just you have parents out there, you being a parent yourself, you know how you feel about your child's education, and if you felt that their teacher wasn't doing the proper job, wouldn't you be the first person to go up there and say, I don't like what you're doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, I had that a lot, not a lot, but I had that. Your your feelings and your your conclusion is not, as you know, not that unusual. No. A lot of people yeah. feel as you do uh -huh. that are in the same place. And they stay in it, though. I think it's one that you got out. Yeah. The only reason yeah. I got out is because I had a baby. Yeah, baby. And if I didn't have that, if I didn't have her, I'd still be in it, and I'd still hate getting up in the morning and being there and being like, oh, God, I've got to do this again. And I hated it. I absolutely hated it. When I became pregnant, I went back to school for two days, and I called my doctor. I said, I have cramps. He said, don't go back. And for my <laughs> he said, I'll, I'll put you on disability. And my entire Don't pregnancy, worry, we're going to have to teach. You'll be fine. Well, <laughs> so I had these crazy, and said. the kids were crazy. They were, they were very difficult children. They demand a lot of attention. Oh, they, oh. I used to sometimes feel that they were picking away at my flesh to like, <laughs> all I had left was my bones. Oh. But yeah, they were very, very, very needy. They oh, needy isn't the word. And you had 15 children that were needy, not just a couple. And every now and then you had one kid who didn't need you as well, but a lot of times you'd have 12 or 15 children that needed all of your attention all the time. You couldn't be creative. You just, you, you know, you could to a point and then it just, it was too much. It was too much for me. I mean, I'm sure there are people who could do it, who do do it, but... I, I couldn't do it anymore. It is not easy. No. I look at some of the, one of the women I work with taught like for 30 years. I said to Barbara, how do you do this? How do you get up every day for the last for the past 30 years? You come here every day. And she said, because I love the children. And I said, Jim, yeah, that's how you do it. If you love the children and you love being with them, then you, you have can to do love it. You work with yeah, to be but I didn't love them. I went into education, okay. I think, because I remember I wasn't even going to college. I was going to stay home with my boyfriend and, uh, you know, do whatever. And my mother said to me, you don't go to college, you're going to work in the supermarket. You know, that's, that's what she said to me, and I was like, you want to work in the supermarket? You need an education, so it's very important. And I was just so turned off to school, and my guidance counselor in the high school said, this, this is probably a good thing for you. And I really think if I didn't go there, I would not have gone to college. And Rachel, right now you turned off to teach. And in 10 years, you don't know what you're going to, where you're going to be yes. or what's going to happen. To, you know, mm -hmm. think people, people are allowed to change their mind and people are also allowed to rediscover what they knew a long time ago, to rediscover beliefs that they had. So, good, you're on a good path. <laughs> Just anything else that, uh, that anybody has it. Just about, you know, exhausted. What you I, I have a question. What ever happened to, to Maslow? Why, like, what was the last well, year? Why did it close? Yeah. You know? Well, that that was a question. This one that I was going to throw to you guys in terms of why is why is it that what we did, which we were all saying was so successful for us, for what for us, whether we were teachers or whether we were students, it was successful for us. Why were Toffler's words, when he came to the, when he, we had him on tape somewhere saying, in a few years there are going to be miles of this school all over the country. Mm -hmm. Why did that happen? Why, given all the, Eric says in, Re, in California now, they're talking about the reform movement in California is getting started, and, and clearly he's going to have an influence where he is, <laughs> but what, what happened over the past 15 years? Why has it taken so long? People are afraid of change. Yeah. I think it takes too much.
much work to create change, too. So people, like you say, I mean, rather than really try to challenge and work and create something different, it's sort of like you're allowing yourself to get beaten by the system, you know? And I don't think that there's enough of a strong community or an idea of what community is about for people to work together to keep that kind of thing going. The other thing, though, in fairness to, to Rachel, you can't do it alone. You've got no, to have you a support group. Yeah, if you don't have a support, if you don't have support, you will be, you will be hung out to dry. Some well, that, and that, that relates to my work too. I mean, I have to, yes. you know, because I pose a change. I mean, I, I, I present a change, and that scares people. People like the medical boards, uh, the AMA, exactly. whatever. And if there's not people supporting my beliefs or my concepts, and people working together to keep that alive, they'll just destroy us, and they've been trying to destroy us. Just like every year you had to go before the board of vet because this idea of an alternative, you know, what is this? They, they don't like it, it's scared, and they want to get rid of it. And you, know, you know, you have to always fight for that position yes. to have your right to be able to be who you are. Well, that, even on a larger scale with the children, you know, you talk about the parents and they're sending their kids to school, and usually it's kind of like, oh my God, they're going to school. Yeah, they just throw them out and have to take responsibility for that. Yeah, and somebody else will do what I know I'm supposed to be doing or disciplining or whatever. But that's not what school is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about learning and growing. And, and really, if, if the kid is coming home and it starts asking questions to the parents, or no, we don't have homework, and there's free time, and there's, you know. So what I'm saying is, so do, is it because people got tired of fighting to keep Maslow going, that we found just like gave in, and they just fizzled down? Or? It's, I don't think there's a quick and easy answer, Paul. I think mm -hmm. what happened was it was, it was, a, it was a process. And it probably began when Joe Trousseau left. When the staff decided, Joe handed us his resignation because he knew that if he stayed, uh, the resistance to him was building in the community and there was going to be an explosion. So rather than create all of this white heat around a, a none issue, he said, look, I'm going to relieve you of the anxiety and I'm going to which is a courageous thing for him to have done. Very too. Well, Very why did that happen? Well, this was well when, when you start working with people who are at risk as a teacher, I, I know teachers who are working with students, population that, who are at risk, what happens is the teachers become at risk because you get hooked emotionally. Also, you start putting yourself into crisis situations where suddenly you are the disruptive agent in a very dysfunctional home. Now, who is the bad guy? Mm -hmm. That son of a bitch teacher that came in here oh, and did yeah. this, and the next thing you know, you are hung out to dry by parents who are themselves in a, in a very, maybe an abusive situation, and there's a, 